It's 6.30, so I'd like to call to order the July 13th, 2021 Village Board of Trustees meeting. Um, and we'll start off with citizens' comments. Uh, since we're hybrid, uh, well, we'll take, take it from uh, here first, and then if anybody online wants to say something, we'll, we'll hear them. Well, I think I am remiss. I um, did not get an application in for sidewalk sales for a August 20 and 21st. And I know we have to plan in advance. And so this is kind of the only meeting before. Is that a Friday and Saturday? It's Friday and Saturday. Okay. Same. Same deal as always? Same as always. Does anyone have any questions for Beth about sidewalk yeah. sales? If not, I have to entertain a Thank motion you. to accept the. Uh, and I'll get the application. The to application, it. once it once it's in, with those details. I move to accept the application for having sidewalk sales on August 20th to 21st. And a second? 2021. I second. Seconded by Brenda. Um, any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Uh, no. So, uh, mo uh, motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> August 20th and 21st, sidewalk sales. Any other citizen comments? Hearing none, uh, we'll move along to, uh, I don't have any additions or deletions from the agenda. Does anyone else? No. no. Okay. Uh, the manager's report. Certainly. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, for one, uh, Pike Paving is finishing up the, uh, the, um, paving job on 106, 4, and 12. I did reach out to Matt and Megan today saying, what's the timeline for the crosswalks? Just to make sure they're not going to miss those. Uh, I know they're kind of they're kind of back and forth there. They seem to be between that and the driveway aprons. So that seems to be. So I'll get a timeline from them on that and also the kind of a timeline where we are on the aprons as well for that. Um, also, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be reaching out to a lot of the businesses here in town in the village. God, I've met some of the business owners, but I haven't met a lot of business owners, obviously because of COVID. So I'd like to do that and kind of re either introduce myself or reintroduce myself to business owners. So kind of find out where they are, what kind of help they might need, and so kind of go from there. Um, and then a couple of personnel things. Um, some of you may know or may not know, uh, Beth Fish has um, unfortunately left us. She has moved on to uh, Mascoma Bank. So we are, we are inter in the process of interviewing for that position. And I think most of you know, but some of you may not know, Elijah Lemieux is our new director of public works. He is going to be over both highway and sewer departments now. So we welcome him. He's going to be, obviously he's been on staff before, but he's going to move into this position with a lot of ease and it would be a great compliment to the staff in this position. So I think that's all I have. Anybody has any questions? Did you want to mention that hazardous mitigation we talked about? Before? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, Oh, go ahead. Well, I just wonder what, what they, you mentioned what they were, and the plan is to take that large step at some point soon. Right. So currently what we're going to, there are going to be three. There's a committee uh, made up of Daphne uh, from the village trustees, uh, uh, Ray Bourgeois from the town, myself, um, Dave, Dave Green, and Joe Swanson, or Robbie, when he's back. So we're going to meet in three times, and we're going to be developing a plan. We're going to be looking at the big, um, the major hazards that face Woodstock. We've come up with five, I can't name all five of them, but <laughs> the top two are severe weather and uh, pandemic. I know there are three others, but you'll be seeing flooding a draft. Of, flooding must be one. I think flooding was one, yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, flooding kind of comes under severe weather. Oh, yeah. What we did, we, we grouped all, most of the major severe weather, you know, thunderstorms, flooding, wind, all nice. under one category. So, um, so, so look forward to that later in the summer. Uh, Toy Littlefield from Two Rivers is helping us with that. So she's, she's got a lot of experience with this. So uh, that's where we are with that. Great, thank you. Any, okay. other, any questions for Bill on the report? And any questions on the financial report? 
Um, yes, I want to bring something up, but unfortunately we don't have David Green with us, I don't see, today. Because um, he might be the one to answer this okay. in particular, although Nick, you might know. Uh, Short-term rental. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. We uh, created the short-term rental regulations when there was a big spike <coughs> in rentals in the village of Woodstock. <coughs> and then, um, since then, the number of people applying to register has dropped. COVID hit, the number of people registering has dropped tremendously. And it's reflected in our, our the budget. Um, you know, short-term rental enforcement, $4,700, actually spent $750. Not a lot of that is going on. Do we know how many people have registered at this point? I don't. Nikki may know. Nikki did, but she may need to check her her records. Nikki, do you know offhand? Um, um, hold on one second. I can check, but it was not a lot at all. Was it? I mean, last year was it the, on the order of eleven. Um, previous. Year. I'm pretty sure it was less than last year. Less than last year. That's interesting. So, yeah. Okay. So we'll just for us all. And I don't numbers. unfortunately have a number, but I do know it has. It was not a lot. Okay. Well, that's helpful to know. The only question I would have had for David Green is, is he checking online to see how many people might be doing it without registering? Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, we have actually have a, a finance st uh, structure for people who do that. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up because on our on our financials, they're way out of line with what we guessed based on pre-COVID <coughs> registrations for short-term rentals in the village. Um, it's actually maybe good news uh, that we have so few, if indeed people are adhering to the need to register who are doing it. Um, so people can stay at the Woodstocker bed and breakfast and other places instead. Um, that that was my that was my main question. Does anyone have any other questions on yeah, this? I just why the parking meters were 195 percent of budget. Was that uh, in the expense column? Yeah, well, that that would have to do with the new meters. Yeah, I guess so. yeah. I just know that was. Well, yeah, the, that's exactly. Yeah, that's what that is. But we didn't budget for the new meters that high. It's 147,000. I just wanted. It's just a big number, and it's a big. Percentage difference. That's all. It's like almost double. Do you know Joe offhand? Have my question? Yeah, yeah, probably Robbie would. Yeah, yeah. probably. Robbie. I don't. Yeah, right. I can. I can follow up with him if you'd like. Yeah, that's only. Yeah. Came in, it's the number that sticks out the most. Sure, I can follow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Bill, I'm sorry. Is this the revenue number only? The expense number. Oh, the expense. expense. Okay, yes. sorry. Like, I, I didn't you'll hear, you'll hear, hopefully, a revenue <coughs> number shortly, perhaps. Well, at least for the most recent one. <laughs> 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 Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. So um, we have uh, instead of Chief Blish, we have uh, Joe Swanson here with us tonight. And Joe, would you like to give a police chief's report? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so speaking of meters, so overall for the month of June uh, revenue was nine thousand six hundred dollars. The kiosks were two thousand three hundred ten. The meters were six thousand four hundred eighty four, and Park Mobile was eight hundred four. Is that an increase or a decrease? Um, I don't know what the May was. What, no, from, from last year, year, the previous. Oh, year. June of twenty twenty. I don't. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you give the report again, <clears throat> that's what we look at. Where, where is that relative to what we've experienced in the past? Yeah. But that, that's... Can you rattle those off just one more time, John? Yeah, sure. Um, kiosk was 2310. Meters were 6,484. Mm -hmm. And park mobile was 804. Thanks. Um, moving on, the, uh, the park mobile signs that the Lafayette company took down as part of the sign package will go back up once they've finished the paving project. Um, the ESB is under work still. Um, no real update from me on that. Um, That's the emergency services building. For those who don't know. 
the um, police department conducted a speed action plan from July 5th to July 13th. Uh, so for that week, a uh, few days, we completed 36 directed patrols. So that means stationary patrol, generally 30 to minutes to two hours. Um, on Central Street, Church Street, Elm Street, Pleasant Street, River Street, South Street, and the Green. Uh, so in total, we conducted 36 direct patrols with four tickets issued. Uh, Central Street was 10 patrols with zero tickets. Church Street was one patrol with zero tickets. Elm Street was five patrols with two tickets. Pleasant Street, two patrols with zero tickets. River Street, eight patrols with zero tickets. South Street, eight patrols with two tickets. And the Green was two patrols with zero tickets. Yeah, this is surprising. Low number of tickets. What were the hours? Um, real quick, it'd be about uh, 25, 26 hours. During daylight? Uh, during all hours of the day, but primarily between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Were you surprised? That, that, no. That number of tickets? No. That felt normal to you? Yes. Okay. And, yeah, I, I have a question. Um, so are you able to park in a place where people can't see you? Because it's pretty obvious where... Our, our limits are the topography and the driveway, you know, the driveways that we fit into, the curbs that we fit into. Right. Um, so there, there's not a legal limit as far as where we can and can't, where we can sit that we can use a radar effectively. Okay, because oh. um, we would probably have some suggestions and opportunities for you to hide your car better. <laughs> Is there a street or location that you think that we could park at? I think that there are probably several that we would offer on the street because um, we're really not happy with the amount of speeding, as you can probably see from the sign we put out. I'm listening. And, um, but I'll give them to you later because I don't want everybody to know where they are. <laughs> but I know that the neighbors will be more than happy to help. Yeah, if there's help. someone that doesn't mind us using their driveway. Right. The other, you know, this gives me the opportunity to talk to you about, um, I didn't, you know, there didn't used to be a turn on the River Street from where the rec center is coming, and I noticed that didn't with the pavement, used to be a turn. there did not used to be a turn oh, onto like River Street from Route 4. And You mean like where the curb, the curb like, juts out? Um, okay, so you're going to go over the bridge. You're coming from Farmer's Market. Yep. So you're going down the street, and then... You turn on. You can turn on the river onto River Street, the other end of River, river Street by yeah. the Rec Center, but that turn you didn't used to be there. And yeah, they put the curbs in what 2008. As as a speed reduction. Yeah. Yeah, but it, you've always been able to turn there. Well, right. you can turn there, but there wasn't a turn lane specified because it's oh, it's yeah, sort of an went, invitation. In Correct. Right. So that was put in because uh, there was construction on the bridge, I believe, and no, there was a the detour. Bridge was 2007. Okay. Can we not have that turn lane because we have a we have the same amount of traffic on River Street now that would happen during a parade. Um, we all have those doorbells that count the cars, and mm -hmm. we're getting over a thousand cars a day. The volume and the speed is. So you're requesting the turn lane be eliminated? Yes. I, I am. would defer to the town manager on that, okay. but no, I don't. Think that's yeah, possible. it would help that's because that's one of the e -trans. problems that we're having on the street. And um, I mean, unless you live there, you may go by and it's quiet when you're going by, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. And everybody would would yeah. say that that was put in I, it's my recollection by VTrans in 2008. Okay. So no, I'd, I I'd like I'll, to have I'll, that I'll, removed. To, and yeah. now is the perfect time. Which yeah. we can try. I mean, because it's up to the state. We don't yeah, have a lot of I control. But I can I can certainly request to Jennifer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And. Um, you know, it was right, and then they shaved it down. And then when I came through tonight, they moved it over, and I can tell that that's what's going to happen. And, and I, I don't know. We've been trying to address the traffic problem on our street, and this would really help us to not have an invitation. You know, the, the hill sliding in on that section as well, the street is unstable. You know, up in the corner, it's probably not wide enough on the hill by Rockefeller. So, um, and I'm wondering since I'm not sure that that's legal yeah. anyway. And they haven't painted it yet, so we might. I right. wonder if that's maybe they won't. Maybe I can. Well, that line needs to be there yeah. on the hill, 
but that's not really why I'm here. I'm, you know. What I'm wondering is the state put that in for safety reasons. I mean, people who know River Street are going to be turning there anyway, um, possibly Jennifer. I think that they put and it in when that bridge construction was being done, the big project, no. because they had to put another layer on the street the to do that. <coughs> to allow people who want to turn left onto River Street. I'm wondering if that was part of the motivation for them. Well, now we have so turning. many that, you know, the street can't handle the traffic. It's falling into the river. It's too um, much traffic. I, I yeah. hear it's falling into the river. Have you, have you been on River Street on that section yeah. between Mountain and uh, Route 4? Uh, the hill's sliding down, and we just keep putting pavement over it. And it's the same problem that happened on the other side, where all those houses are having to, you know, address I'm, their I'm just structures. That, though, that people taking going left there are people mm -hmm. who know that River Street is a route to something. We have a lot of through traffic. Or do you think that's GPS work? I don't know, but we have a lot. We have a lot of through traffic. We have a lot of through trucks, and even though it says no through trucks, we get a lot of that. So, if you could help us, we would really. Be so appreciative. What I'm saying is, I'm yeah. not sure that would help. That's, that's what I'm suggesting. I think it would definitely help. You don't think people will turn up there anyway? Well, I'm, people turn there because they live there. But we don't want to encourage people to go down there just to cut through and speed so that they can get. You know, really, it's no difference if you go in through town. It doesn't take people longer, but they like to cut through. So, um, you know, we're just not set up for. That much traffic. The road is well, not I, I think holding up. To be trans and find out with him. Yeah. 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 The history of why they did that. Sure. My my first take is you're right. It's for safety and for traffic flow. Yeah. And we're talking about Route Four there, so I would imagine there's nothing we can do. And but I'd like to, if we could find out the the um, the engineering behind why it is. That would be good. Uh, All right. So I, let me just check. Thank you very much. I appreciate sure. it. Sure. Um, and there is grant money that will soon be made available for um, s speed tracking equipment. Um, I spoke with the woman from the company and emailed with the chief about it. Um, so there's plans to purchase that equipment and to deploy it. Um, when we spoke, which was about last week, the money was not available from the, I think, the state. Um, but as soon as it is, which is any day, we'll make that purchase. Okay. How's it work, Joe? How's the tracking system? Uh, the equipment itself, I haven't seen the catalog of, so I don't want to um, yeah. speak out of turn. Okay. And I, that's all I have for right now. Great. Thank you. Uh, questions? Yes, Beth, you have a question? I do, and I should have maybe done it under um, citizens' comments, but. I brought it up at the last trustees meeting and I'm going to bring it up again because I spoke with people tonight at six o'clock frust concerned about the kiosks. We really should have a sticker on the kiosks that tell you the parking time. I keep, I probably shouldn't say this, but I make my own for the one at the Welcome Center and um, just because, you know, people are putting money in afterwards, they can't figure it out. There's no real directions about the time that um, parking is expect paid parking is expected. We used to have them on the old meters. We we well, we, yeah. Chief Bush said that, that they would be it would be on the, the writing on there, but you know when it, you look at it, but is it, it's not it visible. Is. Or is it, it is, but people have already started putting. Yeah, it will still take your money. So you, there should be a sign in addition to the printing that's. On I would the say on the side of it, and yeah. and maybe on the meters if you can do a little, but at least on the three kiosks, Thanks. right on the front before yeah. you put your money in. Could we? Uh, Professionally made, not Beth made. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Does anyone yeah. else uh, No, I think that's agree? a good idea. Because oh, I all. often tell people not to put it in okay. before. We'll, we'll pass or, that on you know, to Chief Sundays. Blish and, and uh, try to get those <clears throat> decals produced. Thank you. Or we'll ask him to produce them. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other questions for Joe? 
we we're talking about speeding a little later in the agenda. That's later too. on okay. the agenda for Route 4. Right. Um, okay, so let's move along then. Um, and we have a permit request from St. James uh, to hold its ninth annual church fair at a slightly different time than we're used to in the past. I think it might be 90th. 95th. Yeah. It's yeah. one said 95th. Not 9th. <laughs> not 9th. It's the 95th. 95th, yeah. That's incredible. Um, okay, and so what, what they're requesting of us, of course, is to close the small road that's in front of the church uh, during that event, which we've always done. Um, and so uh, we need a motion to allow this to occur. I move to allow that to occur. As, 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 as applied. Right. I second. Okay, motion made by Bill, seconded by Brenda. Any dis other discussion on this topic? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and uh, no abstentions, um, motion carries. Okay, next up is Use of the green permit for Bookstock 2022, and they want to change their date from late July when they used to have it to the end of June. Uh, June 23rd through June 26th. Um, so this is by Peter Rumanier, who's currently in Colorado. Um, and I think all we can do tonight is um, we can improve the date but it would be pending the fees and insurance that are required to have the event um, occurring before the event. Um, so, um, are there any questions about that? Uh, well, let's first of all, I'll, I'll, let's make a motion to approve that book stock on June 23rd through June 26, 2022. Pending approval of the, uh, of the uh, permit fees and the insurance necessary um, for the use of the green on those days. And they'd have to be the, the fees for 2022. Yes, whatever yeah. they might be. So the current fees. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I move to approve the application has. With that? With, 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 yeah. Those provisions. Both provisions. I second. Seconded by Brenda. Thank you, Daphne. Uh, any any discussion on that? Uh, no. Okay. So, Nikki, please be sure that uh, that those folks know that you know they must complete that as we get closer to that date. Um, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any nays? Hearing none. The motion carries. Okay, next up on the agenda, where is the agenda? New business, okay, cannabis opt-in timing discussion. We've had a presentation by the cannabis committee that was quite thorough. Thank you, Kareem and, uh, and Seton, who, who isn't with us tonight, but sits on that committee. Um, but we need to discuss the, the timing and a presentation time for the public before we vote to give people uh, an opportunity to learn more and to ask questions and to think about what they want to do before we ask them to vote. Do, are we in agreement that we should be doing that? I hope. Okay. We seem to be. Um, Kareem, can you give us some, uh, some feedback and uh, timing that you think would be appropriate? I know that's October 2022 that uh, such a business could actually start if we opt in. And we're just talking about the village here. We're not talking about the town. Yeah. So um, as you heard through our presentations, um, so when you say public presentations, I mean, we did present at the trustees and at the town, uh, at the select board, which were public meetings. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you mean additional uh, presentations during those venues, uh, or more specific presentations to certain no, audiences? Just, no, just to do that again, but really to, so people say, you know, we missed that, we didn't get a chance okay. to hear, and perhaps doing it in the town hall theater. Okay. Um, uh, 
as we move down of uh, right. So, to do that. so the committee is looking to regroup sometime uh, in September uh, to prepare for an additional sort of wave of presentations, and we're hoping that by then we would get additional information from the state control board. Uh, one of the critical pieces of information was already addressed, which was around the local option tax. So we got that answer. If you already have a 1% or planning on having it on sales and use, it would capture those sales, right? Uh, the second one uh, where there's, you know, we need some clarity. There is a risk that it might be delayed beyond October uh, of 2022 because the control, the, the, uh, control board was formed later in the game compared to the original schedule. Uh, but nothing is certain. It might still move forward following that schedule. So that's one of the things we're going to go check with the control board since now it has been formed. There is a staff there now, right? Uh, so that would be an important piece of information. The other things we're planning on doing is targeted presentations based on the topics that we covered, youth and health, um, tourism, even though the information is more anecdotal than specifically driven by statistics. Um, and also safety, right? And so we, we, we are planning on providing um, informal discussions and meetings on this so people can attend and ask questions and we would advertise this using, you know, the listserv, et cetera. Um, and then we, we were waiting to see what the trustees on the select board wanted us to do as far as presenting for, uh, further in information prior to a vote being decided eventually to be put on the ballot, right? Uh, during meetings such as, you know, this one or select board meetings. So we were waiting for some feedback. But that is the plan right now. Uh, hopefully by the time we get back together as a committee in September, we'll have a little bit more information. And obviously uh, um, through uh, uh, Seton, you know, we will, we will keep the trustees informed as far as what we plan on doing, but we're also looking for some feedback from you. So one of the reasons this is up for discussion tonight, the timing is depending upon what the village and what the town want to do, um, you would want to have some time if, for instance, the village decided to opt in or the town decides to opt in, um, it takes a while to set a business up if such a thing it wanted to be in business once it's allowed. Um, and so, I, I, you know, we don't want to wait to the last minute, certainly, to educate people. And also, uh, to uh, we want to have time to develop a local commission. Definitely, this is um, critical. And so that's critical. Yes. So that's why we don't want to put it off too long. Do you think November might be a good month, November of 2021? To, to do what? To have um, a well-publicized public meeting that could cover, actually, yeah, uh, I think Mary, so. what do you think, cover the village and the town? Yeah. Two uh, birds with one stone. I, mean, I, I don't want to speak for the committee, but seeing the speed at which we've been, we've been operating, I think this could be reasonable that we could have something in place, and I will share that information with them. Um, also, I would presume that if something gets put on the ballot, it would happen during the election, the uh, voting that takes place in March, in March anyway. In March. And that leaves enough of a window, not only for businesses to get, to get ready, and just remember again, we're talking about retail only. That's the only control that towns have. Everything else, which is people growing it or this and that, it's, okay? So, yeah, uh, so, so that should give enough time. And it should also give enough time, I believe, uh, to start thinking through if the opt-in goes through, uh, what would that local commission look like, etc. And I'm just thinking out loud, that might give us down, uh, time to get some more information from the control board as far as what should such a local commission look like, and maybe we can go to some of the towns that already opted in and see what they are doing on that front and see what type of commissions they actually formed and how this is actually working from them. So, you know, we can share some of those findings as well at that November meeting and with the two boards. Okay, so unless someone has other suggestions. I just want to ask, what the timing of these targeted presentations, Kareem, you, you mentioned the, the main topics, I think, are taxes, tourists, youth, health, and crime from the last meeting. So were you trying to do a targeted presentation for each topic separately? or what did you so, so based on what we learned from the survey, it uh, looks like there's uh, three big buckets because taxes really it has been solved right there's not much more to talk about it um 
really it's it's youth and and health which kind of go go together right uh, but they may decide to separate those um, tourism and we will try to address as many questions as we can and then safety right um, and so those we would form informal type presentations and those people on the committee either the, the uh, members of the committee or the advisors that are mostly comfortable with those topics they would take charge of um, driving those types of presentations and, and bringing them to the public and the public will be invited to ask questions etc. Maybe here what would the format be? Um, I, we, we haven't thought through it, but really we would, we would advertise it and then uh, de depending if we have a venue where people could come and attend, um, you know, if we get the okay from the town to use something like here, for example, plus Zoom, okay. right? I think Zoom would, would provide some flexibility to folks as well. But for the formal presentation, yeah. um, I could just try to plan on somewhere in the first two weeks of November, okay. if possible. All right. And, oh, and, sure. that, and, so that, and that one, I'm hoping, would cover, uh, Mary, do you agree, the town and the village? Well, yes, I think that they should be um, a joint meeting yeah. and um, November's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that'll give time for questions and discussion before we... Um, are you thinking, Kareem, that it should be um, on the warning for town meeting uh, for the March meeting um, I mean I it's it's you know it's not my call to um, okay because in order for it to get on the ballot there's there's two ways it can get on the ballot it could be decided by the select board as well as the trustees uh -huh. and, or it could be also done through the regular process which is five five percent of the, the population uh -huh. with a, a signatures right um, I am presuming and maybe it's presumptuous that uh, in, in, a, in a democracy minded town and village, uh, both boards will be favorable to at least put it to the ballot so let people decide what they want to do, right? But anyway, and, and it might make sense to me uh, uh, to make it part of the general annual voting process, which happens in March. Um, that way, that gives enough time, you know, to think through the commission, but also gives enough time to those businesses interested should the opt in go through to get ready for that. That's what, yeah, I think it's what we, we would believe makes sense. We just also. have to keep, keep talking, yep. keep discussing. And, right. Um, and then it would be on the ballot for everyone. So, so the only but, point I want to make... The only thing that I don't understand being on the ballot is we would have to figure out a way to differentiate the village and the town. So it would be uh, at town meeting and village meeting on the ballots, two different ballots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the only point I would make about sort of early November is that it's right after foliage and um, maybe some of the business owners might decide that's a good time for them to take a break <laughs> because, you know, nothing happens in foliage, right? Um, it, right now it feels like it's foliage, frankly. So, so, um, so that's the only... I mean, it shouldn't stop the process, but just something to keep in mind. Maybe you know, better to have it a little bit later. Right. Now. Are you going to take a break? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm taking a break in November. <laughs> but it shouldn't be hinging on me. I mean, there's you know, there are other very capable people on the committee who can actually drive this. The hair still grows in the Thank you, Kareem. So I think that's a good yes. direction. Yes. A good direction to head in, and, and uh, the chair of the select board's here, and she thinks that's a good direction. Mm -hmm. So let's try to make November okay. happen. Great. Let's move on. Um, so next, we want to discuss a little bit about the Woodstock History Center parking lot. And uh, two members of a committee that I've been working on that for a while, Brenda uh, from the trustees and Jennifer Raymond, are here. And Brenda, you want to tell people where we've been going or who? Um, well, um, so we, Jennifer primarily, has been working extremely hard on this project for a very long time. Um, I merged with Jennifer um, a few months ago. I think the two of us work really well together. I feel like we're making progress. Um, we've got a formal lease written up um, that we are hoping that um, our other members would take a look at and see if they're comfortable with it. Um, 
we also have some other ideas uh, for later down the road that I don't think I want to discuss at this moment. Um, but I feel like I feel like we're on the right track. We're making good progress, and I think we just got to keep the train rolling. And I think that um, I think we're on the right road. Yes. Uh, is it for the village to lease some of the space? I'm just maybe I missed something here. So I know that you've been talking about it, but is to it lease the entire lot? The entire lot. The history okay. center parking lot. Yes. Okay. For employees or for everybody? <coughs> for. Um, or you haven't decided yet. Uh, um, mixed use. Okay. It's mixed use. Yes. Okay. Mixed use. Great. Thanks. Eventually. And how many spaces are there? Uh, 28? 29. 29. Great. And this, the, the potential is there for down the road for some of those spaces to be possibly discounted if we had control over it for um, employee parking for people who actually live in the village in rental apartments that might get developed in the buildings of the village. That would be a long range vision for that. Uh, that's great. Because there's nowhere for them to park in the winter currently. I know. Yeah. There's all kinds really of are. options for us to proceed um, in a good fashion, but right now we're taking things a little bit cautiously and just trying to work out the details as we see fit for the moment. Right. But there's lots of options for bigger and better things. Thank you, Brenda. Jennifer, anyone Jennifer? have questions for Brenda and Jennifer on this topic? Jennifer, I have a question. Hi, I have a question. My name is Kimberly French, and I'm the president of the board of the Woodstock History Center. So it's really nice to be here tonight. I just wanted to say that um, the commission that's been put together, or the committee, the parking committee, I think has been working really well with Matt Pars, our director, and uh, a document has been put together, a uh, building and grounds committee has reviewed, and we are continuing to look forward to working with the village on what's a good approach for leasing. Um, I came here tonight because Bill Kerbin called me a few weeks ago to inquire about the purchase of the property. And then I also had a subsequent conversation with Jeff. And um, I asked if that could be the process of having the committee look through um, any options between leasing versus purchase um, and to withhold discussing this outside of myself or Matt for a while just until we really get all the details down. There's been an excellent document put together on the leasing option with the committee. I think the committee's worked very well. Um, and then since then, um, I, I also wrote an email to both Jeff and, and Bill to respectfully ask that you respect our process. Um, and then since then, Bill, I know you've contacted each and each of our trustees, all of whom have called me and wanted to know why we're selling our property um, and wanted to see the proposal. So I think it's um, a little ahead. I think the process has gotten a little ahead of what we actually were planning on. And I am here now for the third, the third approach to respectfully ask that the village trustees respect the committee, the parking committee process and the building and grounds committee at the Woodstock History Center. Let's work together on this. We want to be a good neighbor. We want to look at any proposal that comes forward. Um, but when it goes outside of that process, I think it creates more um, issues or, or more questions. And it puts me in an awkward position of having to help trustees feel secure that we won't be automatically selling property. Um, so I'm here tonight just to ask that we all respect the process and work with the parking committee. Well, we certainly will do that, Kim, and thank you for letting the cat out of the bag, which you did and not us tonight. <laughs> As you noticed, well, we you called all the trustees purchase. to be fair, and there are 14 of them, so they all know this, so they're I'm, all talking about it. Uh, okay. Uh, we're looking at all kinds of options. And, not, and we're, we'll be happy to respect your process, and we didn't even mention that tonight because out of respect for your process. But that's where we are, and we will continue to respect the process and uh, work through the committee. Thank you, Kim. Okay. All right. 
So. Um, Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Brenda, for your work on this. I do really appreciate it. <clears throat> We're, Jennifer and I are kind of enjoying it. It would be great for the town to have the space. Yeah, it would be wonderful yeah. for the town. Mm -hmm. And we respect your process, and we will try harder to make sure that we follow that. Yeah, although I will say that just talking to trustees to ask opinions is kind of normal, and I don't think we did anything wrong in doing that. We, but this is so short, so soon in that whole process that we didn't even want to bring it up tonight. Um, right. I guess just, you know, with Bill calling as the town manager, I mean, there were automatic questions of, has it been evaluated? Has it been assessed? Why are we looking at this? And so, you know, before we ask anybody anything, we need to have more details on, on what's actually being explored. So that is why I, I came here tonight. I mean, this, again, this was my third attempt. So um, I have tried to keep it just within the email and calling you, but since that didn't work, I thought coming here tonight um, in an effort to really help everybody just make sure we're being fair to everyone and making sure everybody is aware that we don't have any proposal right now. We're just simply exploring this. Absolutely, that's all we're doing. Thank you very much for your patience with us. We will all work better as a team to make sure that we follow your guidelines because we respect um, your wishes. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you so much. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so any other discussion? That's the, Thank you for the update, both of you, very much. And um, moving along, next on the agenda is the use of Rockefeller Endowment Funds, which were withdrawn by the uh, Town Select Board as well as the Village Trustees for capital expenditure use. Now, $200,000 was withdrawn under the advice of the Investment Committee that both boards accepted. And the Select Board has already met on this and have proposed using $100,000 of those $200,000 towards the purchase of a new ambulance uh, for the emergency services in Woodstock. Um, so um, they, the select board controls the lion's share, but the village has a, a portion of those funds. Um, so we need to decide um, what we would like to do um, with our portion. Um, and that still leaves uh, a portion of the $100,000 that has not been uh, committed by the select board as of yet. Um, uh, their share of that um, remains uncommitted. I, I would really love to see, uh, I'd like to hear the rest of the trustees' opinions. I, personally, I'd like to see us spend money on something that's going to last a really long time. On the one hand, uh, an ambulance does not last a really long time. On the other hand, I, I, I think it's important to support what the select board has already decided. But my suggestion is we might consider for this other 100,000 that has not been committed to anything, one suggestion, we, sh we should think about where we would like to spend that on a, on a capital expenditure. And you know, the renovation of this building is coming up. It's a big project, and I think we might consider that being a very appropriate and long-term use of, mm -hmm. of that, that that would be appropriate for that money. So I'm opening this up to say, um, if we're going to move forward with the ambulance, we need to make that vote. And if we're not going to, we need to say what we want to do with it. But I, I, I would support going along with the select board so that that 100,000 is separated from the additional 100,000 that remains. And I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts on that. I think the contribution to the town hall is fabulous. I do too. I think that's, that was the first thing I thought of before you even mentioned it. So, um, this building and the re rejuvenation of the entire building is really important to the town historically and otherwise practicality as well. Mm -hmm. The theater. Brenda? Um, I agree with that, but I also am a firm believer that if we gave our word that we were going to um, give 100000 for the ambulance, that we should make our word good and we should do that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that too. Mm -hmm. Is that okay with you, yeah. Bill? 
Uh, in that case, I'd entertain a motion for the village's share of the $100,000 of the $200,000 withdrawn from the Rockefeller Investment Fund be uh, earmarked for the purchase of a very important need, the purchase of uh, a new ambulance. That doesn't cover, that 100000 doesn't cover the whole purchase, by the way, but it's, it, it certainly covers a, a large part of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd entertain a motion to that effect. I, I move we use a hundred thousand of the two hundred thousand. No, our percentage. Our that. percentage of that towards uh, annual. I agree. Remaining towards. I second. Well, thank you, Daphne. Seconded by Brenda. Any other discussion on this particular topic? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and there are no nays or abstentions, therefore the motion carries. What is the percentage? Do we know? That's it before the vote. What is the, what is 12%? I can't remember. Mary, do you remember? I, I you know, 12.5, yeah. It's 12 there, point something. That sounds pretty close. Yeah. 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 There are no, um, there's no, there's no proposal for an ambulance. If they're not here, it's, it's a ways off, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I do think it's twelve point five. And I hope you carry our thoughts towards the other hundred thousand towards so back to the select board as a potential use for the you, other. Did you say don't carry no, it? No. Please carry, carry our forward. thoughts. Thank you. I certainly back to will. Board. Thank you. All right. Next up, um, discussion regarding ARPA funds. So, Bill, can you outline? for everybody exactly how this is figuring out. So right now, we are waiting for, well, just to start. So this year, the village will be getting 44,000, approximately $44,000. So in ARPA funds, and then next year, we'll receive another $44,000. Uh, we won't get this funding probably for another two months now. That's approximately just to kind of do to the, kind of the whole process and drawing it down from the treasury, then it has to go down to the state. So we can use these for four different um, areas. Anything that's uh, kind of COVID uh, related specifically, things like for like public health, more like things related more to the emergency and hazard pay and that type of thing for police and fire. Uh, there can be anybody, economic impacts that are done to businesses, households, there's that category. There's also a category for lost revenue, and there's a formula that we have to plug in to do to see what that, if we would be eligible for that lost revenue. And then the third, fourth category is infrastructure, which would be water, sewer, and um, broadband. So um, for the businesses, I looked that up. I know Jeff and I were having a discussion earlier today. Uh, let me find that exact language here, because it is, it's so actually there, well, there are two things here that we might have an opportunity for. So supporting small businesses and that's helping them to address financial challenges caused by the pandemic and to make investments in COVID-19 prevention mitigation tactics. And then there's also um, speeding the recovery of tourism, travel, and hospitality sectors. So supporting industries that were particularly hard hit by the COVID-19 emergency. So those two two areas. It's kind of vague. It doesn't give us a lot of background. I think I'm going to reach out to BLCT to see if they have a little more guidance there. To say, you know, is it really that open or specific activities that we can provide to businesses? Does that mean they can we could use it for a business that you know they have lost revenue or something like that? I don't. Or something like we were discussing, like Coburn's. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, I think yeah, if, if, it's, if we can legally do it. Legally, I, right. I don't exactly. think, I mean, there's been a lot of assistance to small businesses mm -hmm. uh, provided by both the federal and state government. But there have been COVID-related aspects. For instance, I'll, I'll name one. The, uh, there was a plan by the owner of the building occupied by Dr. Coburn's tonic, still called Bentley's by many people, that building, to renovate uh, the building, uh, which needs a painting badly. It needs new soffits along the top. It's a, it's a very historic building that everyone sees and is in terrible condition now. There was a plan. Uh, uh, I had spoken to that owner. It, 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 
got slowed down. I actually started the painting process, but the, it was not. That wasn't being done the right way because it's about ten layers of lead paint, and so they got to tent the whole building in order to do this. It's quite something. Um, but then COVID hit. His income is primarily from uh, many restaurants down a number of restaurants in Manhattan and, and Connecticut, and um, they all closed. He had so many employees out, and uh, it hasn't recovered. This is no longer high on his list or radar. That's the, that's the COVID-related aspect of this. To see if we could use some of those funds to rehabilitate that building would be one idea if we could use that that way, because it was in the plans to happen, and then he says, I'm sorry, no, I don't have the money. Um, it's, it's COVID just killed everything. And, uh, if we could use money in that direction, I would certainly think that would be a worthy place to do it. So, but that's something we need to get an expert opinion on. Yeah, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll reach out to VLCT and, and Charlie and see. Yeah, them. and I think if other folks, the, both the the public or um, other board members, have ideas for how we might use the, some of those funds, uh, we're open to hearing them. Corinne, and then Roger. So, um, having you know, being in the sector that was the most impacted by the by the pandemic, I I look at this in, in two ways. First off, forty four thousand dollars, even though in the absolute it's a nice chunk of money. Starting to think through how, how to spread the joy among a bunch of businesses, it's going to dilute the impact. Okay, uh, that's one. Two, to your point, uh, Jeffrey, uh, there was a lot of help that was offered, and those that did qualify. I believe, attempted as much as possible to take advantage of that help. Um, the idea of uh, addressing that facade, I think from a marketing point of view for the town, uh, um, I think this is a great idea, by the way, um, because it's one of the first things that you see. Um, I, I doubt it will cost $44,000, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, for, for, for the balance, I think it might be also a good idea looking at the infrastructure. Since we're going to require estimates for some of the wastewater plants and things like that, we're going to have to pay the engineers to do that. It might be also an area that we might want to look at if there's any money left over to see if we can spend some of that money uh, towards that effort as well. The town, by the way, had a lot more. Okay, well, good, good, all right. Okay, so, so then my second comment would, would, go, would go to the town, of, you know, obviously. But even though uh, the, the, the vast majority of those users connected to the sewer system are in the village, uh, so there might be an interest there, too. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's, that's good. Roger, you had Yeah, I would just like to strongly urge that any of this money that comes in be spent on actual capital expenditures that this not be used as kind of a, a way of not paying taxes as much next year. Um, and from a personal standpoint, and I can't speak for anybody else, I would be very, very disturbed by the town giving money to a business who has had decades of deferred maintenance and giving that person a significant good out of public funds um, and unless we get some equity in the building um, you know I just I think we're we're handing out money to somebody who's been irresponsible as a as a building owner for decades no not for decades because he, he hasn't owned it okay yet. well he hasn't even owned it for one decade okay but the the building is has been had had no maintenance on it for quite a long time that's true and I just don't think it's a good precedent for the town to, or the village, to decide to put money into a business with no return. No financial return. Okay. Jennifer? Um, I know one way that they, they're handling it at the state level is if you give money for an improvement, you know, for affordable housing or whatever, um, that then you pay that money back it becomes a loan, and you pay that money back when you sell the, sell the structure. So maybe in the form of a loan. But I, I agree, like, that's a tough thing, is that all the businesses need help right now. So to single out one, yeah, but that's a... Helping the business, by the way, he, the restaurant part of that is not his business. Right, but I, I totally agree with you. That's such a pivotal build, building in town. 
that really sets the stage and it's in terrible condition. So I think it would really help the village to do that. Um, but I do know that, you know, this, this approach, you know, making it a loan at the state level is um, something that, they, that they've done. By the way, there's, there's uh, other monies um, that could potentially are significantly, significantly higher. And we're not talking about 40 something, by the way. It's the next year would be another 44. So it's we're talking about $89,000 for the village that we know is going to be coming. Um, the, there's money that's been earmarked for um, uh, not for currently for counties. That in Vermont's case, where we don't really have county governments doing much, um, they're still working out whether that can be translated for those funds to come to municipalities, mm -hmm. um, in which case the town and the village would be entitled to probably significantly more money than those monies we just discussed. Uh, that remains to be seen. I'm just throwing it out there that uh, that may be coming down the pipe if they can work out this county business. Am I right, Bill? That's right. That's, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. So it's interesting. So it's all open, and uh, but just we'll be receiving that money fairly soon. So mm. we're going to hold on to it until we can come to agreement on uh, a good use of it and one that we're allowed to do. Also, but we don't want to not come up with something because they, they, if we can't come up with something, we just don't get it. We don't get to keep it. And we've got the good news is that we've gotten to I think it's December 2024 to make that decision. Granted, we don't want to obviously wait till then, but we've got a little bit of time. That it's not like we have to spend it in two months or three months. So right. That's the good news here for once. Yeah. yeah, and we will be discussing this again along with the select board on Thursday at 6 p.m. as a part of the agenda for that joint meeting, right, Mary? Okay. Uh, because the town has way more than that. It, coming to it. We have way more expenses. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's very true. All right, next up is on the agenda is traffic speed on Route 4. Um, I, I know, I don't think we'll hear from Roger on that, but uh, somebody else. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, traffic speed on Route 4 discussion, and I'm glad Joe is here too. And, um, uh, a number of folks have, uh, just as previously we've discussed problems on River Street, we've discussed problems on South Street, and now um, Lincoln. folks on uh, Lincoln, that's right, and now I'm folks on, on Central Street are worried about speeding on, on Central. So I would first ask Roger, um, uh, I know this is a concern of yours, so if you would uh, bring that up. Sure, so let me just be clear, and maybe I didn't make it clear in my initial email, I'm not just concerned about speeding or traffic safe or pedestrian safety or traffic safety on Route 4. I'm concerned about it in the entire village, and I think it's a it's a it's a townwide problem. But but you know we can talk about the village. I think it's time for us to make a comprehensive approach to this. Um, you know, I, I was surprised, as, as I think other people were, by, by Joe's report about these targeted speeding. Um, and 26 hours for the number of tickets does oh. not seem like no, a... No, so there's actually more, more hours than that. Okay, well, so even a lot more hours than it's 26 hours. 36 complete patrols if they're one hour each, so it's 36 hours. So 36 hours for the number of tickets that were written and the implication behind that that the the amount of impact that it's had on speeding does not seem like necessarily the best expenditure of, of finite resources. I think we need to look at a comprehensive approach to this. And personally, I, I think that the majority of cars going through the, the village are speeding. But don't take my word for it. We should be doing a traffic study. We should be doing a speed study with an outside agency. There's a bunch of them around. Initially, I would suggest that, that we look at Route 4, Route 12, Route 106 in the, the speed limit zone, probably High Street as well, and probably um, River Street. That would be about five miles or so of street. Um, and I'm sure we could talk to Vermont League of cities and towns and maybe three rivers or two rivers, <laughs> whatever it's called, um, and, and find some, some engineering agencies that could do this. I reached out to one 
um, just to find out if I could get a preliminary cost, but they haven't gotten back to me. Um, and then I think we need to think very seriously about what we can do about our enforcement mechanisms and see if there are additional enforcement mechanisms, traffic calming that, that would be approved by the state, probably not on Route 4, but maybe on, on River Street. Um, there's, I, I think we need to look at this comprehensively, both from an enforcement standpoint and from an engineering standpoint, um, because I've talked to people who find it intimidating to walk our streets. I've almost been run down twice crossing, using a crosswalk, and I, you know, unless there's a police officer sitting there, there's no reason for people to pay attention to our crosswalks. Um, even if they do pay attention to our crosswalks, they're often not visible. Um, right now, obviously, a lot of them aren't visible, but I'm talking about before the, before the last grinding where they took off the... If people don't know they're there, they won't stop. And if people know they're there, they might not stop. But so I think we need to look at either signage or something that makes those crosswalks much more visible and we need to find a way of potentially enforcing all of our pedestrian and traffic laws more effectively. So I think that means that we need to develop data and we need to, out of that data we need to develop a comprehensive master plan for addressing traffic and pedestrian safety in the village. Um, and I'd like to see a monthly report of, of traffic stops, tickets issued, and compare that to today going back five years by month so we can start identifying trends that might be happening and see which, which times are, are better or worse, see how targeted enforcement impacts that. So I think we need to do data, we need to do some fact finding with an independent engineering agency, and then we need to come up with a comprehensive plan with the help of that agency or not to address the dangerous and off-putting situation that we have on our streets. Thank you. You mentioned you talked with some firm. Can you tell us more about that? Is that uh... I, no, I just Googled, Googled um, speed study Vermont, and I found an engineering firm that does traffic studies. And now, you know, there's a difference between traffic study and a speed study. Traffic studies are much more expensive because there's bodies involved. Speed studies are just radar, uh, you know, stationary radar devices. We formed a committee on the trustees looking at um, speeding and traffic and um, the pattern of traffic and ways to somehow diminish the speeding, maybe making some of the roads one way, um, which would divert. Um, there's a few other things that we were coming up with, um, but I do agree that we need experts to come in and really give an overview of, of how we would be able to diminish the speeding within the town. And part of the problem with the crosswalks is the cars and the way they're parked and people are standing behind the cars and you just can't see them yeah. until they're in the middle of the road, practically. Beth? I, have a, I, I guess yeah. I had a couple of things, but I have a question for, sure. for Joe. Um, those signs that flash, do they also collect how fast people are going, like? Oh, but like store that data. Yeah, um, I can check with Robbie on that. No, they do. They, do they all? Do they, do they all, or is it? Um, no. I don't know if all of them do, but the one that we have on River Street does. does. But the problem is, is that it's not aimed correctly because the idea was um, that you could see the sign before you come and slow down and decide on your own. So mm -hmm. it's not calibrated correctly to get the speed. So that's why you're not thinking the speeds are very high. It's Do you, because it's pretty much aimed at the stop sign versus people coming down the street. And because I've talked to Robbie about yeah, this. Yeah, so do you want it like, aimed more like into the street so it's less right, for the so stop sign? Gonna, at least if you are reporting this information yep. that's accurate. Yep. Right. But, but the one on, on South Street? I don't think the one on South Street does. Okay. Good. 
It does? Street does? It, it records data. Okay. Because I, I mean, because that's one of our older ones. That one no, seems no, it's a brand new one. The new one. Oh, the new one. By yes, yes. I was thinking the one by. Yeah, the one that's further yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the new one records data. Yeah, because that would be a place to start. At least you'd know. Well, and we have that data now, so that would be a good thing to ask the chief to put together. Uh, another thing on, on Route Four, I, I really would suggest that we start with this, with uh, speeding, uh, recording speeds to see what the reality is versus perception. Um, and I think that would be a really good place. That's to an start. easy request for two rivers. That's exactly what I was going to say. Now, we belong yeah. to two rivers. Right. Two rivers is capable of doing that, mm -hmm. and we don't have to pay um, yep. uh, what we'd have to pay an engineering firm. Um, and we could probably accomplish that a lot sooner. And I think that would be a good place to start and then build from that. I, I, we, I think we all know that this is a concern of the community. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're, and, and safety is a big concern for us all. But I think that would be a, a great place to, could we initiate uh, that request? Sure. So what, which which route are we talking about? Which I think we start with route four. Route four? Yeah, I think we're not going to do yeah. all of them at once. Yeah. Let's start with route four, because we haven't done route four in quite some time. time. It and now it's all nice and smooth. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know what? There, there was also some of the speed. I, some I, think, of the I think the light <laughs> until the painting project is done, yeah. the, the work zone signs are out, the work is out so we can get true organic. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, mean, I think they, yeah. couldn't, they wouldn't take the sign until that was done. Right. right. Yeah, and that's going to get right. You're not going to get a true reflection of what And do you want to do a couple lo locations throughout? Like, what, like, where would you like to pinpoint? Uh, I would ask for the, I would ask for that to come from you guys. Just okay. What, yeah, I can come up with a couple. Suggest yeah, North Park Street. Street. You know yeah, the North spots Street. that would be. Yeah, I think the, oh, I think I have a couple in mind. Deadly. That. Um, and where and where happened. people don't know that they're being their speed's being recorded. Yep. Roger and I talked about this the other day um, in a brief discussion, and I told him what I thought was helpful was back when when we used to have those awful looking orange yes. cones in the yep. middle of the street yep. marking where crosswalks were. I think that maybe that would be a really good idea for the summertime use. Yep. I think we can put some signage up. I know that. Um, we used to have those the fold down ones. Yeah. Um, and once you know, once they're finished, and the town goes through and put up our additional signs, well, I don't know what we have in stock. Anyone let's, that survived the years. Let's, let's let's see how quickly we could do the speed thing first. I yeah. want to really see so that we have the data yeah. exactly what speeds are we experiencing. And hopefully before, before problem, we before we start the mitigation. Okay. And with the crosswalks with. Uh, signs. with we're going from the old red that didn't stand out to the new white hash marks that are the kind of more old fashioned. Um, they may prove to be more effective, but I mean, I think, mm -hmm. I, think well, I think we'll have a continued problem with, you know, with, you know, for pedestrian safety that, you know, I drivers don't people. necessarily pay attention to crosswalks, but at yeah. least at least what we have will be more visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see people crossing the street all the time. Yeah. Oh, I know. And, and, I see and, people and they, to, don't even, they don't even look to the see. Same to they just go. Yeah. So. yeah. I, I, I just wanted to respond to Roger about the signs. You have four or five signs, no left turn. Mm -hmm. They still and, do it. Yeah, a lot. And so I don't know signage except the stuff in the middle. You, you, know, you know, those stupid signs that point to the... Uh, they're so ugly and yeah, we don't. you know. One of the things I, that we decided a long time ago yeah. was you know this village was getting overrun with signs yeah. from many yeah, different absolutely. things, and we tried to cut back on that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> let's start with the let's start with getting hard data. Knowing what we. Kareem. So um, talking about the safety piece as opposed to the speed, even though they're connected. But as far as the crosswalks, and, and I get your point, we don't want any more signs. Uh, where I used to live in New York, uh, um, they, they would put right in the middle of the cross uh, walk for the pedestrians, the thing that says priority, I mean, they just spell it out, priority to people crossing or something to that effect on each side. Mm -hmm. And that would really slow down people because they're right in the middle of the street. It's not only a cone, it's actually a sign that's attached to the ground and that says you must give priority to people crossing. Mm -hmm. well, we, we don't want to attach them permanently. 
exactly in the middle. Yeah. yeah. And it does say you must yield to pedestrians or yes. yield to yeah. pedestrians. Yeah. Yeah, I forget. Does it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's that it's make a difference? I mean, it's high hazard. Yeah. Yes. Or high vis yellow with a right. caution so crosswalk required. Yeah. That, 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 I mean, I, I found that this really helped. Can we ever just clarify, Roger's doing a traffic study and we're talking about a speed study. Yeah. Well, it's exactly They're related, though. Okay, how? how well, a traffic study, study, as I understand it, and I'm not an engineer, okay. is a comprehensive look at the, enti the entirety of your traffic the patterns. patterns, you know, and that, that, there actually have to be people doing that which is obviously prohibitively expensive. Yes. A speed study can be done with devices. Yes. Um, and as long as you do a long enough sample and you know what you're doing when you set it up and, you know, because obviously you don't set it up at two in the morning, although everybody at two in the morning is speeding, for sure. And the difference between April and July is pretty easy. Right, exactly. So, you, you know, that, that's why engineers who do this know what they're, how to set something up efficiently. Which is not to say that, that I wouldn't agree that, that starting with two rivers is a, is a great way to do it. I'm sure they know, they must know something about how to implement this kind of thing. We can pursue what it takes to do a traffic study at the same time, so we have some frame of reference, is what you're saying? Well, but the cost would be... I mean, be my, I, that, so we know I'm not going to gonna advocate for a traffic study personally, because... I don't think that we have a complex enough street scape to really, you know, yes, you could, you could, if all the trucks could run by in a bypass, that would be great, but that's not going to happen. Um, so I don't know that a traffic study per se would be worth the money, but that's not my decision. Um, I'm, I'm really more concerned as a speed study and a pedestri pedestrian. Well, let's Let's start there. Let's start there. Any other comments? I have a question. How far over the speed limit before you take it? I can't <laughs> say that. Confidential? <laughs> I mean, let's just say it's 25. <laughs> It's 10%. We want people to, to drive. I'm just speed wondering limit is how far over we're letting it go. No, the, the, That's all. The, the, like, could, could I just say that the other thing is that, that in studying whether you're a village center or a downtown designation, if you're a downtown designation, you can change your speed limit in the center of, in your village. So you, right now, it can't be any lower than 25. If you're a downtown designation, you can lower the speed limit. Hmm. Just FYI. Okay. Yeah. Um, and okay. We looked into that, it's pretty difficult, but. Yeah, especially on Route 4, but maybe some of the other streets. As far as, um, I'll ask, we'll check with Rita to see how many, they, how many speed points they can deploy and um, how many ever it is, we'll pick the top two or three. And yeah. All right, so I just sent her a Did time. you? Great. Yeah, I already sent an email. Sorry, yeah, we're, we're in motion. Two three, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. All right, uh, next up, any other business to come before us this evening? I just said, we talked about a welcoming event or something. Beth and I talked about it briefly. I'm not sure it's going to be feasible for us to sponsor because it's just too hard to find names of newcomers. I mean, you go to the, the tax records and you get addresses and stuff, but to get phone numbers and to get email addresses or anything to welcome these people and find out who they are is becoming, it's not impossible, it's just very difficult. So I'm not sure we can pursue that. Well, for, well Bill, you're, yeah. are you aware of the event coming up? Uh, I think Theo Kirchhoff is organizing it um, at the History Center um, uh, involving new folks mm -hmm. and as well as existing folks to, to come together and meet um, to discuss, to, to meet each other, to find out what sure. they love about Woodstock, to talk about visioning. That's, uh, I forget the date, that's coming up. But do you know, Beth? Um, but this is a private thing? This is, no, this, this is no. private. And the public is, inv is invited. Uh, I thought, it was on the list, sir. It was on the list, sir, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and I thought it was a lovely idea. Um, so we should have a representation there? <coughs> yeah, you should be there. Okay. Yeah. I, I will say, <coughs> uh, interesting, I had, I, twice in the same day, I had someone call who 
wanted welcome packages put together for their three new neighbors because they didn't know about trash, they didn't know about where to find information out about sidewalks. So I think we really should think about maybe a better investment might be something that realtors yeah. can give, can put with their, when they sell a home yeah, to someone. Um, so I put together a bunch of information, you know, the little phone books, the links to stuff on the website, et cetera. Um, and that might be a good investment in time and, and energy. Um, I could help you Because with that, there's though. three, yeah. you know, there's three opportunities for trash and nobody understands because if you come from a larger municipality, trash is just something that happens on every Thursday or, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not what happens here. True. So. Well, yeah, so it could be Daphne. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to help you with that. That would be yeah. super, and maybe Bill yeah. could help. And yeah, we, help we could get a welcome packet together. Sure. To, so the date of this event, somebody tell me. I'm oh, okay. I don't recall the date. Okay. You should have a it up. I think it's just put it on the list of a couple of different times. I thought it was maybe the 20th. I don't know. I was envisioning it being on the green kind of thing. Beth and I talked about doing it yeah. in September. Fourth, wasn't it, Beth, or something? Right, Labor Day. Yeah. Or but, um, well, about this is uh, sooner. You know, this is sooner, and it's a, a, and a big it's venue. Great. It's a big venue, it's the History Center grounds. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, so, well, Beth's looking at that. Um, we can move on to if there's no other business before us, uh, approval of minutes. Nikki, are you listening? Oh my God, you found an error. I just couldn't Sorry. believe it. <laughs> I'm here. You've been doing such a good job. I'm very frustrated as a proofreader. <laughs> I didn't find it. It's, but Daphne did. Well, which one? It is June 8th? on um, the June 8th, second to last page, under executive session to discuss um, personnel. The motion by Ms. McElroy. It's 8.55, it should be p.m., not a.m. Ooh, you are oh, right. Man. Oh, Nikki. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be perfect. <laughs> She's awfully close. Pretty close. She's That's she right. You're right. Sure you guys are reading this stuff. We are just <laughs> planting them in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is all your secrets <laughs> out, Nikki. Um, okay, so... Uh, any others? I didn't find any. Any other? Aaron? Okay. Yeah. I'd entertain a motion to approve uh, both of those sets of minutes. I move to approve the minutes of June 8th and June 24th. And a second. Seconded by Bill. Um, um, any discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, minutes are approved. I entertain a motion to adjourn. At uh, 12 minutes to 8. Wow. I can go home with our friends. Motion made <laughs> by Daphne, seconded yeah. by Brenda. Yes. All in favor, aye. Aye. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.